Hey, I'm Alec, and on this episode of Let's Make, I'm gonna eat my face. First off, if you haven't seen the first episode of Let's Make, you can go ahead and click right here to be able to see me try to put a speaker in a 3D printer to make it talk and talk about the different statuses of a print that's going through it. But today, we're gonna work with the form box. The form box, which is a vacuum former, is very different from some of the other processes you might be familiar with. Now what a vacuum former does is you take a sheet of plastic, you put it up against the heater so it heats up and then it gets really pliable, like basically just a big bubble of plastic and then you stretch it over your form. I had the idea of creating a mold of my face based on our previous video where I made a bust of me and a lot of other people in the company. And I'm gonna use that to make a mold so I can pour chocolate into it. So the first thing with this is making sure that the vacuum is plugged into the form box, not into the wall. It doesn't totally matter if you do plug it into the wall. It just means that when you're ready to pull, you need to turn the suction on. Whereas if you use the timer through this and have it plugged in, when the timer goes off, it will turn on the vacuum and apply suction. So if you want a little more automation, you can plug it directly in here. I'm gonna do that today since that's what the instructions say and I wanna show you how that works. But you're going to need to take the plastic, put it in here, turn up the heat to the temperature that's printed on the case with all the other plastic sheets turn the timer to the same setting, and then once the timer goes off, you're gonna drop down the plate with the plastic and all that held together, and the, it will turn on the vacuum, and you're just gonna wait a couple seconds, and when it's done, it should turn it off. Ooh, it's still hot. Well, I got a little bit of a web on my nose, so first attempt, it's this close. A little less time. Now I just gotta get it out. Look at that, it's me! Uh, this is too much power. Uh, this is gonna be fun. Uh, I didn't expect this one to be nearly as good as it was. I thought that with the webbing it was gonna be a little off and I thought that the part had stuck to it, but uh, this part, totally clean, first run. Really good, a little too much webbing right here, so it's gotta go in there for like two seconds less, but I just got my face sticking out of a wall now. I should just hang it, just put it right here, just staring at everybody. This is the third one that I pulled, and this one came out the best. There's still a little webbing right here. Um, it's not too noticeable. I used the, my thumbnail to just kind of rub it in and get it better. Um, other thing I've noticed is that the bill of my hat, I didn't do the perfect job at smoothing this out, so there is a very slight undercut, um, and it does take a little bit of work to get it out, but the fact that I acetone smoothed it did make it a lot easier to get out. Uh, the technique I'm sort of developing as I go along is just to kind of hold the plastic so I'm not really bending it as I'm trying to pull it out, like I'm trying to pry it out, and it's kind of awkward, but it's the best I figured out is to hold it straight and then just kind of press it. And since the bill is the part that's stuck, I'm just kind of working that out. And what's nice is I can see where there's air pockets just based on how it looks through the plastic. So this should come out pretty easily now. Come on, there we go. Ta-da. Perfect. Now that we have all of our form box stuff taken care of, that's all done with, I'm gonna start with the food stuff first so we don't have a bunch of contaminants from all the resin, things like that. And I've set them up so that the really deep ones are in cups so that they're well supported. Now, what I did do is I brought out a hot plate and a container full of water and I'm going to do a double boil. So I have one container with water and a smaller container with the chocolate in it. That way the chocolate doesn't burn and it's gonna make it clumpy and really hard to stir if you don't do it, if you just go straight with it. It can work, it'll just be a little more complicated. As hard as I try to not get any water in here, 
what actually ended up happening is that this container was trapping steam bubbles as they were forming at the bottom and the whole thing started rocking, making waves and water got in here. So this is not super smooth anymore. I'm gonna put it in this mug to maybe get uh, a little more height so that water can't get back into it, but this may be a lost cause and I may need to pour out more chocolate. Perfect. I'm covered in chocolate now. And the glove is covered in chocolate and I'm not licking it because it's, I don't know where this has been. It's probably f covered in dust and goo. Uh-uh, mm-mm. No, it's all in the folds of the leather. I'm, oh, and it's just getting worse. I don't know where more chocolate's coming from. What have I done? At least it's not the stuff that we're trying to pour out. This stuff looks good. Oh boy. Apparently, the last time somebody here tried to make something with chocolate, it never set. And Ricky was there for this, and he didn't tell me about how they fixed it, which is by putting chocolate morsels back into the chocolate after it's already melted. And somehow the baking science of that makes it work. So tempering it. I knew it was a thing with metal. Apparently chocolate behaves like metal. Cause that works. There, perfect. <laughs> perfect little fills. So many things I wish I could say, but I can't cause it's gonna just get bleeped anyways. So while the mixing and melting of the chocolate may have been a little rough, I think the actual molds themselves are gonna come out really well. I'm just gonna let those cool a bit longer and in the meantime, I'm gonna work on making some different gummy molds and filling those with some gummy, just using some gelatin mix and letting that cool as well. But I think they should come out pretty cool. So now that I had poured some unset gummy into my face and the chocolate was setting up from the chocolate mold of my face, it was still apparent that I had a lot of gummy left over. So I started thinking of some other ideas we could do and I printed some little fills and made them set out in a grid and started making some little gummy fills and some little chocolate fills. In matter control, I dropped in the Stormtrooper model and put it into the bed so that I had a flat back for vacuum forming. But then from there, I'm still gonna need to change some of these support settings and other settings in order to get this to print better. Like increasing the top solid layers to 10 from five, so I make sure I don't get any sort of pillowing when I put in the heat from the plastic. And then with the support settings, dropping everything to either zero for distance or air gap, or 0.4 for the pattern spacing, since I have a 0.4 nozzle. Now this does mean that the support is gonna be 100% solid and will be basically part of the model now. And so you can see here, it means that I don't have any overhangs which are gonna catch with the vacuum forming. And so now I have a totally vacuum formable buck that's gonna work just fine on the form box. And I still had leftover plastic and I ran out of the gummy and I didn't really feel like using more of it. So what I ended up making was this package for fill. So it looks more like a vintage action figure container or like a, oh, there's a name for it. I think they're called bubble figures where it's just a piece of cardboard and a bubble over it and it displays the figure, it says like contains 44 points of articulation and things like that on it. While Formbox isn't the first vacuum former out there, they definitely made the process a lot simpler. Being able to jump straight into this from 3D printing or even without 3D printing thanks to their included starter guide. Along with that, they have the casting sheets which have all the information you need on there like temperature and time to accurately be able to form your different parts over your models. Now, this project has been ridiculous, pretty fun, definitely messy, and definitely tasty. So stay tuned for the next episode of Let's Make. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers, and thanks for watching.
Thanks for watching. If you like that, give us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all the big builds, how to's and troubleshooting guides I'll be working on. And don't forget, check out matterhackers.com to explore everything 3D printing and to join the community.